Okay, good evening everyone. It is April 27th. Welcome to the school committee meeting. Our first order of business. Welcome! Yay. Thank you. And congratulations to all of you oh, on your election. <laughs> congratulations. All three of you, right? Yes. yes. Um, so the first thing we have to do is reorganize. We need to elect a chairperson, a vice chair slash secretary, and we'll get to the committees in a minute. Um, I am willing to act as chair for a second year. I don't have to. I'd love for you to. I would love for you to also. I think you have a very good relationship with the town, and that's very important to us right now. Really, and, for, and me, it's all, meeting, for me, it's too. all about graduation <laughs> this year. I just want to be up front in graduation this year. It's pretty cool to have your daughter, <laughs> uh, your, or your child. Or yeah. I've done it. Um, so I make a motion to elect Linda Dunleavy as the chair of the Hadley School Committee. I second that. Um, any other nominations? May I close the slate? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think that's how you do it. <laughs> it works. Um, vice chair, currently I believe it's Heather, Heather. is yeah. our vice chair. She's not here. I have no I'm idea not, if she'd, I, if I she'd like to do Heather. it again. <laughs> I, <laughs> <sleep on it>. <laughs> <laughs> I second it. Is that what you get for not showing up? I think exactly. it is. Let's say we close that slate. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Maybe we should discuss the committee oh, assignments okay. tonight. No. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of Heather as vice chair slash secretary? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, appointment of committee, uh, we're thinking instead of doing that tonight, we'll do what we did last year, which is give everyone a time to think about it. Let me quickly tell you about our committees. Sure. So we have the policy committee that um, We'll have a light load, Very we light hope, load. in the in this coming year because Humera and I were the policy subcommittee and worked for two Months. and a half years, I think. Huh. Gosh, was it that long? I think it two was. Years. To get two years to get through, and we've reviewed every single policy in the book. So oh. that um, committee may not have much to do this year. Mm -hmm. Finance committee, always an active and busy committee, and I would think the finance committee members would also have the role of kind of being uh, most constant members to the tri-board. Yes. Tri-board is your very first day in office, you went to a tri-board meeting. Grounds and Maintenance Committee talks about the fields and the building and issues, works directly with Chris and Annie. We also have a Capital Planning Committee, which is a committee that is on the town side, that we it is a member of the select board, School committee, finance, finance committee, committee <coughs> treasurer, various others, some at-large members, talking about the capital plan for the town each year. So you guys want to think about it and get back to me and tell me what you'd want, and we'll do this next month? Yes. Sure. Okay. Is that in true, does that include the representative to the Collaborative for Educational Services Board? I'm happy to serve another year. And if I don't, you're, whoever goes from Hadley will be going to the finance committee meeting on the 11th. <laughs> I, I would give that one to Roby just tonight. Anyone else? I agree. Sure. Okay. And then we need signers for bills and payroll. This is a weekly going over to the admin building, reviewing the warrant and signing the warrant sometime between Friday afternoon and Monday evening is when they need to be signed. Mm -hmm. By Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah, usually so by, like Tuesday by Tuesday at 10 sometimes. When do the warrants need to be signed by at the latest? For the town hall, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, they'd like them no later than Tuesday. Tuesday. Early Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday morning. <clears throat> yeah. So we need three signers and two alternates. And that we usually give a, a spiel to the new person to tell them how much of an education it is to sign the warrants <laughs> really because you see where all the money goes. Sure. You can, actually, you can, if you aren't familiar with the whole school system or you don't have kids in one or the other, um, if you go through the bills, it's, you, know, you can see yeah, what they're sure. doing in the labs and biology. Mm -hmm. You can see, yeah. see where all the money goes. So. Yeah. We said you need three and then two alternates. Isn't That's that right. all of us? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Well, yes. Yes. I've been less available due to my travel schedule. So your preference would be alternate? Alternate. All right. That would be my preference because I go north 
every day, and I always forget to turn south. I've put Mary in a pinch a couple of different times on this. Uh, yeah. It's a simple thing. Yeah. I'm happy to do it. It sounds interesting. So do I have sounds Paul, like Heather, and Roby? As Can we say guess. that, and then we'll review with Heather next Seniority month? If, no. if I have to do it, I will. <laughs> You've had a couple of years off. You had three years. <laughs> you had one year off? Yeah, but you were really close. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> it's exercise. <laughs> We'll check in with Heather, but for now, let's, okay. yes? Yeah. yeah. And I think we've signed them for this week. We're about to. I'm, I'm looking for and so to And so I think it. we're done. We're closing the reorganizational meeting and opening our regular meeting. Okay. Let's do it. I don't have to call to order again, do I? Okay. No, we're very ordered. And we have done executive session. Oh, yeah, you want to? Yes. So I'd like to make this a statement to the community. Uh, we would like, as a school district, to express our deepest condolences to the family of Coach Philip Toy. Coach Toy passed away recently. He was a respected and admired coach, and he was known for his kindness, for his humor, and for his generous spirit. He encouraged his players to do and to be their best. We are so grateful for all that he brought to Hadley, and again, we express our deepest condolences to the Toy family. Thank you, Annie. Um, now we go on to minutes. Mm -hmm. There's a very long package of minutes. Did everyone review them? I did. You and I were the only two there. I wasn't there. Right. But they can still vote on the minutes. Yes. Mm -hmm. They don't have to abstain. Right. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for March 23rd, 2015. Second. I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, no. That's a first. Presentation, FY16 budget. So, Chris and I will walk you through the budget documents you received a PDF copy of the Excel worksheet that delineates all of the expenditures for FY16 and that worksheet that Chris does for you every year is extremely informative so you can see in that worksheet our total budget beginning in FY13 actual expenditures the proposed expenditures for FY16 how much of that is funded out of local budget um, and then total budget for FY16 we are proposing a budget that is a level services budget, although um, it does include the additional special education program, although we would still constitute that as a, or qualify that as a level services budget. And the reason I say that is that if we do not create a program for these students with significant emotional and behavioral needs, these students will most likely need to be placed in out of district placement. So it is not an option of whether or not we actually pay for some sort of supplemental services for these students. We believe that in creating this program, it's not only philosophically the right thing to do, but it's actually a cost avoidance strategy <coughs> in the long run. The total budget for FY16 as presented is $7,396,393.14. And that... Glad the 14 cents is in there, Chris. Be sweating it out I know, I know. Uh, in addition to the Excel workbook that, as I said, in delineates all of the expenditures, uh, sources, revenue sources for the expenditures, and there are notes in that workbook that tell you what's changed in the previous fiscal year, we also provided you with a narrative. It is our goal, Chris and I have a goal, of submitting Hadley's budget to the Association of School Business Officials, the FY16 budget to them for review. They have a, a program called the Meritorious Budget Award Program. It's a program in which peer reviewers nationally look at a budget. There are standards of excellence and budget presentation that they publish every year, and then peer reviewers evaluate the budget to determine whether or not it is clear it's an effective communications tool and it's something that is informative and easy to follow. 
So what you have is the start of that. This year we would, we would submit two portions or four portions to the budget. Your first admission, you can limit that to two portions, the introductory portion, and you that's essentially what the narrative is, and maybe some additional pieces we would add to that. And then the financial portion, which this Excel workbook would then be translated into a document that looks a bit more like your introductory section. So high points or the budget at a glance for the school committee, the overall increase of the budget from FY16 from FY15 to FY16 is in the operating fund is 4.8%. The local contribution totals 6.467519 in FY16. This represents a 6.7% increase from FY15 in local contribution. These budget increases are primarily comprised of purchases for new curriculum and instructional materials aligned to the Massachusetts Common Core Standards. Um, very specifically, this year we worked with somebody from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and we're looking to implement the Next Generation Science Standards in the district so that will require the adoption and updating of our curriculum materials. In addition to that, there are increases in wages, step and lane changes, and COLA. Professional development is budgeted according to the Unit A contract, and there are replacement and repairs to educational media and technology. And as I already mentioned, the special education program that we're starting this year at Hadley Elementary School for the remainder of the year, that's being funded through school choice, but it is in the operating budget. You can see in your narrative um, how the budget totals have increased since FY11 and the rate at which they've increased. Included in this is also an organizational section summary and these documents we will review with the PowerPoint at the public hearing of the budget which is Thursday evening here in the music room at Hopkins at 6 p.m. and we encourage the public to attend to ask questions or to um, receive additional information on the budget. The budget is also available in the superintendent's office at 125 Russell. We purposefully included the mission statement, educational philosophy, and the goals and objectives. These are directly from school committee policy because resource allocation should align with our mission, our educational philosophy, and our goals and objectives. And so in our mission, we specifically state that we will continually strive to create, implement, and improve programs that are compatible with appropriate curricula and provide opportunities for innovation in teaching. And I think that line speaks directly to some of our investments, specifically in updating our curriculum materials and creating a program that will allow students to remain within our district and to investing in replacement and repairs of technology. So the significant changes, as I said, overall a 4.8% increase in the operating fund. And we do anticipate a 14% decrease in available grant funding, which is why you see a difference between the increase in the total operating fund in the total budget. That increase is less than the increase to, in local contribution, and that's because we anticipate a decrease in grant revenues. Um, in instructional services, I spoke about why we're seeing an increase there. That has a great deal to do with some adoption of new curriculum materials and also um, step and lane changes and changes in wages. And I want to say that the document that will be available for the public on Thursday night, there will be a correction. I want to call the school committee's attention to it. On page five of the document, it said that the educational media and technology expenses increased by 21700 and that's actually incorrect. You can see in the chart below that ed media and technology increased by $10,500. So that was an error that, that we will correct. Um, our revenue sources for our budget, we are using $520,000 of school choice funds. We anticipate $364,147 from grants. We anticipate applying $44,936 from the revolving account and local contribution of 6.467519, which brings us to our total budget. Some information that informed the kinds of programs that we look to create and um, also will factor into another conversation we'll be having this evening about our school choice numbers. So we did provide information about demographic changes and enrollments. We have seen since fiscal year 11 a decrease in enrollment, but I'm 
pleased to say that while we saw some significant decreases in fiscal year 13 and 14, we saw less than a 1% decrease in this past year. So while there was a huge spike in students um, or a decrease in enrollment, that seems to have stabilized, which we're very happy about that. Also, as we pointed out at the presentation to the town, our school choice numbers are going up, which is great. And the number of students leaving Hadley to choice into other districts has again completely stabilized. So that, and that's in the budget at a glance, where this year on the October 1 count, we had um, our school choice students coming into Hadley had increased from 78 in FY14 to 99 in FY15. And at the start of this calendar year, it was over 100. In FY14, uh, 59 students left Hadley to choice into other districts, and that increased by 3 to 62. So you can see there's a tremendous jump in students wanting to come in and far fewer students leaving, and we're quite happy about that. I did speak to the school committee at the start of this year, and again, this doesn't directly um, – it does relate to the budget. We don't have a specific program that we've created to address this demographic change, but it certainly is one of the reasons that we're paying very close attention to ensuring that we foster school climates where students feel safe, not only are they academically challenged, but that they feel safe socially, emotionally, um, physically, and well cared for. The population of students who qualify as low income by the department has increased. In FY14, it was 17 percent of our population, and in this fiscal year, this school year, that has jumped to 24% of our population. So it's certainly, when you see the degree of investment that we place in trying to provide professional development for our teachers, in working with a wide range of learners, and in providing supports and programs for our students, it's because we pay close attention to demographic data. The town may be interested um, in understanding how expenditures in Hadley how they compare with other towns and cities that surround Hadley. So included in the documents, again, that we will also uh, show on Thursday evening, is a comparison of total expenditure, the per pupil expenditure in Hadley as compared to several other towns in the region. Hadley in FY14, because that's the most recent figures we would have, Hadley spent $12,179 per pupil. Amherst being very high in this region, Amherst spends $19,541 per pupil. Um, Hadley, of the towns that we surveyed, Hadley is second to the lowest. Only Belchertown is lower than Hadley in its per pupil expenditure at 11950. <laughs> and we also provided data on what percentage of the total town budget does the school department represent. And which is, it, Hadley is right kind of in line. As a matter of fact, it's it's a little lower. Um, it's, it's right in the middle, I should say. It's certainly not on the high end. It's about 42% of the town budget in a fiscal year 13. Again, those are the most recent figures that we have, taking them off of um, the department's website, with 42% for Hadley. Um, and the higher places being Pelham, at about 62.5% of the town's budget is absorbed by the schools. Many other towns, it's greater than 50 or more than 50%. And we also provide information on net school spending comparisons. So what percentage above required net school spending does Hadley contribute? And Hadley, the town of Hadley contributes 16% in FY13, again, most recent data from the department, Hadley contributed 16% above required net school spending. Um, the lowest town is 3% above, whereas the highest town is 103% above um, minimum contribution. That is the overview of the budget, and certainly um, <coughs> we will present this budget at public hearing on Thursday, and I believe it's then at that time that the school committee would formally vote to adopt. And assuming no revisions that evening, this then would go to the town at town meeting on Thursday, May 7th. Do I have that correct? Mm -hmm. Are there any questions for Chris or for me about the budget or any of the data? 
Do we want to talk about the um, last tri board meeting and the decision of the select board here mm -hmm. now, or do we want to wait? Do we want to talk about that now? Mm -hmm. So, um, tri board met two weeks, two weeks ago um, to try to finalize the town budget and the the final decision on what the town at this point what the town is uh, supporting to give this to the school is only twenty seven twenty eight thousand twenty eight thousand less than our request so that um, was very good news for the school we've uh, already asked Chris to rework the budget we don't want to use more school choice money um, to cover that shortfall. So we've asked Chris to rework the budget. Um, and happily, when we were working on the budget in January, mm -hmm. probably we were estimating Smith Volk percent increase. Rem you won't remember, but remember mm -hmm. last year Smith Volk's percent okay. increase was 13%, which we didn't find out until, I feel like it was late, April. Late. Yeah, yeah. April late, last, year. last year. I'm just late. 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 Um, and so we assumed, uh, Chris assumed and Annie assumed in the, ver in the first versions of the budget a 5% increase for Smith Folk this year, far less than the 13, but estimating higher than usual to make up for, because uh, last year kind of stunned us. And it's come in instead less than that. So the, pr so prime, the majority of that 28,000 less than our request from the town can be made up in revised Smith Folk numbers. And then you made some cuts to building maintenance and a few other lines to make up the difference, right? Yes, there was uh, a $2,500 decrease in the phone costs. Um, I had reworked the phone, the cell phone uh, contracts last year. We've seen some savings on that, so therefore we can reduce the budget amount. We also decreased the heating maintenance by fifteen hundred dollars, <throat> um, basically we were going to do some work on the heater, the heating units in the library. Now we're still going to do some work on the heating units in the library, but they were very badly damaged by the steam leak that we had. So therefore, that work will be done, and it will be covered by the insurance. So therefore, we were able to decrease the amount by that much. And then there was, you know, a few hundred dollars here and there in miscellaneous accounts that we had, uh, again, just looked at past expenditures and said, okay, we can take a couple hundred out of here and there. And that made up the difference between those accounts. So the budget that is going, the budget that was presented by Annie that's going to the public hearing on Thursday represents the number that we at this point believe is a good number and approved by the Select Board and Finance Committee. I guess we will go to another tri-board meeting Wednesday. Wednesday, and we'll let you know by Thursday if there's any changes. Okay. <laughs> We've received a copy of the town. Budget yes. In preparation for that meeting. So. Oh yeah. Yes. Is it our meeting Wednesday too? Uh, the public Wednesday? hearing. I thought it was Thursday. Thursday, okay. Thursday at six. And did I already say I can't be there? Uh, so not publicly. I cannot be there on Thursday. Unless it goes really, really long, which I hope for your sakes it does not. Um, so this Thursday, just a reminder to the community, this Thursday in the Hopkins Academy Music Room is a public hearing on the school department budget. And then the following Thursday is the town meeting on the whole budget. Um, any other questions or thoughts or comments on that? Just I appreciate the, um, the great report, Annie. I don't think I've experienced that level of detail or overview um, before here in Hadley. So, nicely done. You're very welcome. Thank you yeah. so much, Chris. And we are only 10 pages into this humongous document. <laughs> so we'll look forward to it. <clears throat> There's no public here for our um, public comment. I oh. wondered if you want, since you were going yes. to invite public comment on uh, the meeting time, if you'd want to do that now instead of at the end of the meeting when we might not have the same amount of viewership. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, several years ago, we st used to start meeting at 5.30. We changed that to accommodate um, some people who want, some public who wanted to come to the meeting and changed it to 6.30. Um, 
I wonder if we want to consider 530 again because Richard is always filming our meetings so we know people have ample opportunity to watch the shows. Our principals get to work at 7 in the morning so they're, so they're probably tired when they're here until 9 or 10 at night, as am I. So I wonder if we could um, ask the public what they think of a 5.30 start time, if it's inconvenient for the public. I don't, I, I, we could consider it, but if it works out for people, what do you guys think? Is it harder for you? It, it may be harder. Oh, because, never mind. Um, well, I mean, I, I would just have to make other accommodations. There's athletics, I have an older son playing baseball at right. middle school whose game was going on when we got here. But also, um, uh, it, a second parent who's commuting back from Vermont. So yeah. we, we'll just we'll have to figure out. Have little kids. I do have right. three little kids. But let me think about that. All right. Because I really like the idea of not being here till 10 on some nights. Me too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, don't worry about that. No, no, no. Usually, I'd hear my hand. I could do 5:30. Right. So we'll talk again next yeah. month. Can yeah. we? That would be All right. great. Yeah. And if anyone has any comments, please contact me through email or phone. Now, uh, now, I gave you a little break. Yes. You're back so on. So the superintendent's report to the school committee and people of the town. I always start with recognition and so excited to congratulate Thomas Kowal Stafford. Thomas took the 2014 Preliminary SAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. He met requirements to enter the 2016 National Merit Scholarship Program. Thomas is among 50,000 of the highest scoring participa participants from a pool of, drumroll please, 1.5 million program entrants. Wow. Of these 50,000, 16,000 will be named semifinalists and will have an opportunity to continue in the competition for about 8,000 National Merit Scholarships offered in 2016. And I've written here in my report, Thomas, you are amazing. <laughs> I would like to congratulate Diane Zack, our Food Services Director, for being elected Vice President of the School Nutrition Association of Massachusetts and the School Department I would also like to thank and recognize the staff and trustees of the Goodwin Library. They provide excellent, fun, and educational programs during breaks for our students. And lastly, we would like to thank our counseling and support staff and the teachers and staff who participate in our building crisis teams. Our school community has suffered an unusual amount of loss this year, and the crisis team members and counseling staff at both schools have done an excellent job of supporting our students and each other, and we thank them for that. Next, we've, talk, we've spoken a great deal about the National Association of um, Education for Young Children and accredit, accreditation for the kindergarten. And there is a silver lining to the cloud of budget cuts. Because the governor uh, instituted 9C cuts and cut the full day kindergarten quality grant, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has said since that grant was cut, accreditation is no longer a condition of receiving grant funds. <laughs> So, because there are no be, grant funds to receive, correct. So it's it's very hard to awesome. force people <laughs> to do things. So what we really want to be clear about is, I'm sure the community knows, and if you don't, we have two marvelous kindergarten teachers. We have uh, Amy Hermans and Dr. Patricia Lord. They're exceptional, and all of us. And Mr. Udall and I met with both of the teachers. All four of us are completely committed to having a kindergarten program that meets the accreditation criteria, but we do not think it is necessary to spend the money to go through an accreditation, which it is unlikely that we would exit without being told to spend more money, namely that fence. Um, so we are very clear that we will have a program. We are collecting, still collecting evidence, creating a program portfolio, and that'll be something that we share with families and community members and part of kind of our marketing of our kindergarten program rather than participating in a process that has always been voluntary, but the carrot and stick that the department used was, if you don't do it, we may pull your kindergarten quality grant. Mm -hmm. And we have some confidence that if the budgets change and those grants are restored, that we're not missing out. We no, no, they wrote still... that very specifically in a little letter that I'm keeping here. Okay. It says, no, you will not be punished 
If okay. You will be held harmless. If you choose not to participate and grants become available, you will be held harmless. So we both have a copy of that memo. Okay. Uh, student activities and field trips in your packet. Uh, I don't know. <coughs> Typically, I just inform you it doesn't require an additional vote for the date change. So this field trip came to you last month, mm -hmm. the Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Gettysburg trip. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Burns has requested that he change the dates from October 22nd um, to October 22nd through the 25th. And that is so it does not conflict with a girls' soccer uh, something, a big home game or some big game that oh, happens in really soccer. I can't remember what it is. Mr. Beck probably remembers, but I can't. Um, and the second one is... We don't, we, we don't need any...